Hi, welcome to probably the third tutorial um, that I'm about to give you. Uh, it really is just about a few of the basics of how we program in Stencil before we actually get to the programming side of things. These are a few things that you need to know about how Stencil operates before you can actually manipulate it correctly. Uh, in front of me I actually have the second crash course that's essentially completed uh, up on our screen so we can see here that this is the scene set up with the ship plus some alien ships included in it as well um, and in essence this game is just sort of like a spoof of Space Invaders I suppose. However what we're going to be looking at is how things are placed within the scene itself. So the scene is actually where uh, the, the game operates from. If you create a scene and use the default size then your scene will all be contained in one single uh, window. However you can have scenes that are bigger than the actual window so you can move along and focus the camera on certain things and, and, and go travelling along through the scene. Um, think of games like um, Double Dragon, Street Fighter, those, those sorts of games that you move forward uh, and you go on through a side-scrolling sort of a scene. Angry Birds, if you want, when you shoot a catapult and it, sp it spans along following the flight of the bird as it cr crashes into the pigs, etc. So this is the sort of thing that we're going to be looking at and how we actually manipulate things to move in a scene. And to do that, we need to understand how the scene is completely set up, in essence. Because to move things on screen, we actually need to know a bit about the mathematics behind it, behind it all. So if you can consider this scene, now we'll get rid of this, the background picture before. This scene is in essence a collection of pixels to the computer. Those pixels are located at particular spaces which is set upon an X and Y axis. Now the X axis travels from left to right and the Y axis from top to bottom. We can better demonstrate this in, I'll bring up my friend the GIMP. So you can see here in the GIMP that I have, um, the GIMP by the way is the graphical image manipulation program, it's similar to Photoshop but free downloadable source, um, quite a good effective program. Now if I wanted to draw a pencil line on here, okay, I bring it over onto the screen and I draw it across. Now what this what tells the GIMP where to place this is first of all of course the cursor where I place the cursor is where I want to put my line but the GIMP in the background is thinking okay that cursor has been placed at probably about 95 you can see the numbers along here 95 pixels and travels out to about 340 odd and it looks down the y-axis and says right how it starts and about um, 190 and goes a, and stays around about that level. We went up a bit, so it probably went to 185. Now, in essence, this is the same sort of uh, programming that you need to understand about within Stencil. Okay, when we want to move something from one point to another, we do it over time, which gives us another dimension, but we move it from one space to another. If we want to move it from left to right, we give that thing an X speed of a positive x, okay? So if we want to move from 10x to 30x, we would increment the speed of our object, say it's our character or whatever, the, the spaceship, and we would move that at say 20 per second, okay? And it moves along the screen at that speed until it reaches the desired x position. Now I'll show you this in action, obviously looking at the state screen is not most exciting so we'll test this scene okay and then we'll go and have a look at how it's actually done uh, the future tutorial or the very next tutorial that I'll organize is actually doing the programming behind this so we have up now the spaceship um, and I can move it if I want to move to the right it applies a positive X speed if I want to move it to the left okay say that that point there is at around about 400 and I want to move to 300 I hold down my key and we apply a negative X speed until it reaches the point and I take my finger off the button. Um, up and down movement is handled the same, except uh, I can't demonstrate it with a ship because it's not designed to move up and down, it only does left and right. But if I want to shoot a bullet, 
okay, the bullet moves to the north of screen. To do this, down the bottom where the ship is, is probably about 400 pixels down. To actually get the bullets to travel upward, we have to give them a negative Y orientation. So we provide it with the direction that it needs to head in and then give it a speed to move it. Okay. So we've tested the scene, the ship's working, and we can actually go and have a look at precisely how that is done. If we go to the ship, okay, looking updated. Okay, so what we've got here is a bit of programming which again I'll go into a bit more detail but you can see that if the right is down so if we're moving to the right of screen or X needs to go up we set the X speed to this variable which is called a ship speed which is generically a positive kind of thing okay so we have our ship here that means, um, to ship, feeds, ship speed for self so if we go and have a look at the attributes that we've got we've got this one called ship speed and we can have a look at its um, default value down here which is set at 20 okay so the default value is 20 so it applies a positive 20 now if we go to the left which means we have to move negative along the X plane we go and set the X speed to the negative ship speed so we actually apply negative 20 for the for the self of the actor um, with the bullets Okay, when we create, when we hit the button to shoot the bullets, which is essentially there, uh, we create a bullet at the X of self and the Y of self at the front. Okay, so in essence, the bullet comes into a, uh, into life in front of the ship, and then we push the last created actor. Now the bullets are known as actors, so we push the last created actor, which was the bullet, sharply towards what direction? Minus one Y direction, which means directly up. Okay, and we give it a certain speed. So it's handled slightly differently, but in essence it's the same thing, and then we play the fire sound. So this is what you've got to understand, uh, in essence, that you must know that the, um, the scene that you're working in is a mathematical function. It works on the scale of pixels. So if you want to contain something uh, within a certain bound, so as you saw with the ship, or I don't think I actually tested it, so I'll show it to you now. We will go to our scene, test it. Okay, you'll note that I'm holding my right key down, but the ship will not go off either side. This is something that I've actually programmed into it. Okay, so we can't go out of this set bounds and we need to consider this because you can go into negative X you can go into X that's larger than the right hand side of the screen unless you specifically stop it and you've got to understand how the mathematics of the scene works the closest we'll get is one pixel to the screen and that's why you can see if you really look closely that there is a black line just down the side of that that uh, that ship to the side and again it's the same when we go to the other side so as long as you can get into your uh, into your minds that that idea works. Everything on a particular scene is actually a location, a graphical location. So when we actually place the ship and we place the aliens that we're fighting against onto the scene and we pre-play it over and over again, that's why they don't appear in random spots. It's because we place them at a specific X and Y location. All movement uh, is generally handled using that X and Y mathematical idea that we've got to transpose or move our actor from one point to another at a certain speed over time. Okay, um, so thank you for listening to this tutorial. I, this one's not terribly hands-on, but it is stuff that you really require to know when we get into the programming, which we'll do in the very next tutorial. Again, thanks for watching. Um, I'm pretty certain that I've got more people that aren't in my class watching than I do that have that's in it, but that's all well and good. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the tutorials. Thank you.